Welcome to the third installment of the Roadsterstein Rust Rocket. Today I'm working on the brakes. These are the front brakes that I installed, sadly, about two years ago. Um, they developed a little bit of surface rust on the rotors, so I just blasted that off real quick with a drill. Um, and uh, I'm kind of getting everything cleaned up, because hopefully, here in the next week or two, these brakes will actually be working. I uh, also was able to tune the carburetors. Um, I'm not exactly great at carburetor tuning, so fair warning, but they were way off. And uh, I did a bunch of studying on how to do it. Um, I've never done it before in my life. No one ever really taught me anything like that. Thank God for YouTube. <laughs> But uh, I was able to do some, some research and kind of figure out the basics of carburetor tuning and uh, try to tune them myself. And holy cow, the way they were tuned before was bad. Um, one of the, the two carburetors was tuned all the way rich. The other one was tuned all the way lean. <laughs> and the, uh, the synchronization was way off. So I was able to use my unison and get them tuned that way. It's not perfect because Unfortunately, they're old and the linkage is kind of worn out, so it doesn't really hold a tune very well. So I'm kind of jamming out. I got my laptop going with Pandora. But I should be able to just start her up. Let you hear it. I should say that is a cold engine and the choke is off. Now you can't see it in the dark, but it runs really, really well. And in addition to that, I decided to have a little bit of fun. And so you'll see right there, that's a, uh, that's a siren, so check this out. Well, actually here. The one thing is I've got this motion detection built into this, but since my center console is metal, it blocks the signal. <laughs> so in order for my, my new security system, which is what I'm getting to, I have to pull the center console off of the middle, which it's not actually mounted because it's the wrong year or the wrong kind of center console, and it, it's just kind of sitting there. It, it actually holds pretty well, and it's been that way ever since. I mean, I've, I've never actually mounted it, so it's not a big deal. The previous owner put this piece of wood and this horrible, ugly shifter thing on there. That wasn't me. It looks like crap. That's on the docket. It's just a pretty low priority. But in any case, check this out. I don't know if you saw that or heard it. I've got it set up, so tail lights. Well blink so the system is armed currently I got the little horn right there and I've got the antenna for the security system right there you can see it Oop, I got too close to it <laughs> so this is what I'm talking about with the motion detection so here's my hand that's over the car Oop. You gotta have a little delay because it resets itself. There we go. Pretty cool. And uh, then I can, I'll just set, this is the parking lot, you know, car finder. Gives you an idea of how blisteringly loud that is. It's horrible. But that's the idea. <laughs> so of course, if somebody breaks into the car, um, that, that sound you just heard keeps going and going. Um, I don't have it set up with any door triggers. The way that it's working is actually these doors are just kind of, they're a little sticky. So when you open the door, it actually vibrates the car enough that the alarm system will sound. That, in addition to the motion detection, it'll sense the door opening in addition to the vibration of the door unlatching and the alarm system goes off. But it's not overly sensitive. Now it's on blocks right now, so I don't know. That's probably going to change some of it, but... So it's not overly sensitive, but we'll see... Maybe I should get my uh, my key fob. See, I've got a Viper key fob here. It should. It's on blocks. Like I said, that will affect the sensitivity. Let's 
so it works. Um, so yeah, normally that would actually go full alarm when I open the door like that. That was just a warning chirp. But a lot of that is because the car is up on blocks. The suspension doesn't have the ability to move, and so the vibrations are actually cut down fair, a fair amount. So it doesn't work like it normally would, but not a big deal. I have tested it thoroughly, and it will, every single time when the car is sitting, it will set off the alarm when I open a door, which is exactly what I want it to do. So that works out very, very, very well. Um, in any case, so I got the alarm system in. I had to rebuild all of the, uh, the wiring harness like I had talked about before, and one part that I ended up doing um, or rebuilding on the wiring harness recently, which I hadn't done with my previous update, is the headlights. So I've got them sitting right here, and they're actually right now, they're on the, the, the pole form says S brake, which is not right, but that's okay. It used to be choke, so this makes slightly more sense. Um, but in any case, I don't know if it'll even show, but the, the gauges are lighting now, and when I pull the switch all the way out, I actually have working headlights and I have working brights. The brights have never worked since I've owned the car. The whole wiring harness for the headlights have always been kind of foobar, and now they work properly. So as I said, it's getting much, much closer to being done and ready to go on the road. Um, I'm hoping in the next week or two, it will actually be on the road. So what's, what's left at this point, I've got the engine running, I mean, awesome. Absolutely awesome. It has never run this well since I've owned the car, and I've owned the car since 2008. Um, it's starting to actually work like it's supposed to. We also did, uh, I should mention, we also did a uh, um, valve adjustment, although we're amateurs, so who knows if they're right. They're still a little bit noisy, but I think that's just because it needs an oil change. It's got oil in it, but the way the carburetors were tuned before, they were so rich, I think it was just pumping gasoline into the engine. Um, in large enough quantities that it was leaking past the seals and going into the uh, into the oil So when if you if you smell the oil in this engine right now, it smells like gas and it's supposed to be 2050 But it's a lot thinner than that <laughs> and uh, That's why so I haven't been running it very much. I'm gonna do an oil change before it goes on the road um, put some 2050 back in it and uh, Yeah, but in any case so really all that's left on the car to get it on the road is an oil change and um, getting the rear brakes plumbed. Speaking of the rear brakes, I have no idea how well this is, you're gonna be able to see this. Yeah, it's a little dark, but in any case, right here I've got my new brake lines. God, that's really dark. Um, these are the e brake cables. Um, they go to each of the, um, the calipers in there. I had to totally redo all of this and then run the, um, um, or completely change the e-brake mount as well, because that was all screwed up. And I've got the linkage, you can kind of see it right there, it's really dark. Um, that all is going to be re, or that's all done, and then what's, what's new is I'm going to be putting in the um, hydraulic lines for the brakes so that I actually have brakes, because currently, the master cylinder, as you can see, is loose because I'm not done running the brakes. So I'll get that done. Oh, uh, and I guess while I'm here, that's my rebuild of the wiring for the headlights. So it's running on two relays now instead of uh, um, just going directly to the switch, which is a huge improvement. But in any case, so I got to run the brakes, and that's pretty much it. Brakes and uh, an oil change, and I'll be driving this thing. And it'll be running better than it's ever run before. So we'll see if I still end up having the gasoline and the oil problem that I used to have. I really hope that's done, and I'm, I'm over that. Because <laughs> the thing has compression. I'm not entirely sure why it would be doing that. You can actually tell. And people have said, well, what about the fuel pump? Maybe it's the fuel pump. If you look down there, that's a very new fuel pump. I replaced that only a year ago. It was doing this before I replaced that, and it was still doing it after replacing it. And that's the reason I replaced it, is I figured that's what it was. And it didn't help. So I wasted like $120 on a hunch, which was a stupid move. But in any case, I have a new fuel pump now. Yay. <laughs> but yeah, so um, if you guys have any questions about the car or anything like that, leave a comment and uh, I'd be happy to answer them for you. Hopefully my next update will be me driving it. We'll see. Thanks, guys. Bye.